What's up, fellas? I have some very, very exciting news. Before we dig into what we're really here for, which is an amazing guest, the latest Terp, Rodney Rice, who went to an awful high school, but we'll forgive him for that. Oh, we'll talk about that. Before, yeah, before we get into that, I have to share something with you guys that you are going to absolutely just, just freaking love. I mean, I think everyone is going to go absolutely ape shit over this. What is happening here in the inside MD Sports bracket challenge? What is going on? What? Who is in first place? Who is it? Says everything about how chalky this tournament is so far, doesn't it? <laughs> Who That's is funny. It? My son, my son was looking at the standings because he's in there and he's like, Lawrence France is number one. And because I think he, yeah. it was familiar to him. And I was like, oh no. Oh no, the <laughs> podcast is gonna be awful on Wednesday because I'm like number 142. Yeah, yeah well, I was gonna scroll down so we can get there. I have no but, idea yeah. where I'm at. And by the way, everybody who's watching on YouTube or listening. Any of us on the show or any of our immediate family members are ineligible for the prizes. So if I do end up in one, the top one or two spots, skip over me, and it'll be the other top two people that get the prizes. Whoever's in first you gets. You wouldn't love that uh, year subscription of uh, Inside Maryland Sports, <laughs> yeah. Larry? Yeah. Finally, you trying to say I'm that's not valuable to you? I'm going to finally I'm gonna stop making you pay, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's been a decade since I've paid. Never. Actually, but, <laughs> um, yeah, so whoever's first gets a one-year subscription, whoever's in second gets six months. And if I'm in one of those spots, skip me. Just skip over me. But I want to just scroll down a little bit here. We got in 10th place, Paul's brother, Chuck Douglas, C. Doug on the board, his beloved <laughs> Paul's brother. brother. <laughs> that, is, that is fake news, friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's keep scrolling down. We've got uh, not too bad here. We've got Mr. Paul Douglas in 36th out of a, I think it was 163 entries. That's not too bad. Not terrible. 36, not terrible. pretty good, pretty good. Let's go to page two here. Let's see. Let's <laughs> keep scrolling. Uh, there's a buddy, Tom Wentz. Good buddy, Tom Wentz in 46. Um, your finger's going to get tired. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep, I don't see anything. Don't see anything. Uh, nothing, nothing. Oh, there's Mia Khalifa. She enters every year. She's an 88. Yeah. She's done she's done better than Jeff. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Page three. There's a joke there that I can't uh, make right now. We're in the triple digits. I'm still scrolling. Oh, there's a there's an Ermin, but it's Jacob Ermin. <laughs> Jeff's son. Doing the better Ermin. Better than Jeff. Yeah, it's doing better than Jeff. And then finally the we sharper get to basketball Aaron is mind. Hundred and <laughs> tied for 132nd. Is is Jeff Ehrman. <laughs> you know what it is? I mean, I just I can't help myself. I love the upsets. I pick too many of them every year. Years like this, I had all these ones and twos and threes winning, and I looked at it. I'm like, it never goes like this. So then you just go back and say kind of randomly, all right, I'm gonna pick, you know, this one, I'm taking them out or whatever, because I can't have I had all I had four ones. Anyways, I think I have most of my top teams really although i did lose baylor which sucked but uh go houston go houston let's yeah. win it all give i've it got houston seconds. also well Mr. doesn't it, it all, like, get into like the top 60 isn't kind of like the 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 rolling um you know conventional wisdom about college basketball is that the portal is kind of even things out and you would expect you know, yeah, sure, UConn, Houston, you know, you have plenty of really top-level teams this year. But after that, it's just kind of fluctuated. Everybody's losing seven, eight, nine, ten games a year. So you kind of expect, like, you're going you're gonna to have a tournament that's going to be wild with a bunch of upsets, and then you get one of these, and it's just, like, pretty much it. chalk, I man. I hate it when it's yeah. like this because, one, it's kind of boring, and, two, obviously I love to pick underdogs, but uh, it is – can make for better games when you get those big upsets it's always exciting and then yes. the next round a lot of time is it like last year the final four just i mean nothing against fau and san diego state but it just didn't feel like a nobody wants four. to watch that yeah. nobody wants to watch that i mean that's the thing like you want this perfect balance of like you want thursday and friday to be insane and then saturday sunday and then that first you know the sweet 16 round to kind of clear out the garbage and then let the big boys fight 
in the end. Yeah. It's like that's that's like the perfect tournament for me. And you know, it's pretty rare when you get one of those, and you're certainly getting that this time. Yeah, it's hard to see how anybody but UConn wins it. I mean, they're just so good, but I couldn't pick that. I never picked the top chalk team because that is just incredibly boring to me. Plus, you figure if everyone's got them, you're not really gaining that much by picking them. Might as well take somebody else. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there were some good games early. Uh, what you got? What was the biggest uh, surprise, the best game to you guys? I don't know. I mean, well, I haven't been watched much of it. Yeah. Yale, yeah. Yale, was a, Yale was a lot of fun for me. I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, and then what was the, uh, what was the 14? Was that um, Oakland? Oakland. Yeah. Oakland bombing away. That was some good times. Little grand, grand central Valley Western state or whatever had a nice little, nice little game on Friday and then got, you know, put in their place on Saturday or on Sunday. Eventually. I mean, there's some, it, it, it was uh, an entertaining enough, tournament um certainly when it's a tournament where maryland's not in it i would love her to just be absolute you know batshit crazy and yeah whatever but i mean i even when maryland's bad like i haven't watched it i didn't watch a, as much college basketball this year as i'd normally do just because maryland's terrible and i get bummed out yeah. i don't want to watch the other good teams play each other but you know once you get to the tournament man you just can't ruin that first four days for me i mean it, honestly it's, i barely even care great. now like Thursday, yep. you know, the games will tip off tomorrow night, and I'll just be like, okay, well, maybe if I'm free, I'll I'll throw one on. But like, I don't care about that so much. I I just I just want the chaos of the first four days. I want I want to see my remote control smoldering, and like you know having computer screens up with the TV in the corner and this that and the other thing. Like that's that's what what does it for me. After the first four days, it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, yeah, Maryland lost by now, so whatever, and you know. Or in this case, never even got in. But you know, it's, it's really you know, this about might be the best chance um, the Big Ten's had to win a national title in a while. Or right? I mean, Purdue looks—they could follow that UVA formula where you get knocked off in an unthinkable upset, come back next year and and win it all. So I guess they certainly look like a better of... team this year than last year, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I think they have a slightly is better unstoppable. record. But... Edie's yeah. Edie is a cheat code, and then the guards yeah. finally seem like they might be good enough. Whereas last year, you know, Lawyer and what's his face were just freshmen, and it just didn't feel yeah. like feel like that was going to get it done when it mattered. Um, so that'll be interesting. Certainly, there's not as much in their way, but you know, UConn and Houston both seem elite to me, and and those are outside of those three, I think I'd be somewhat surprised if anybody else put it together. I don't believe in North Carolina. I just don't just don't see that, but. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a dude on the internet. I guess yeah. I know more than Jeff. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's nearly pathetic. It's, forget the Masters. This is a tradition like no other. Me just bombing yeah. out the bracket in the first four days. It's so bad. I It's uh, paralysis by analysis, man. I'm like, nah, well, 12's got to win, but I didn't pick it's a, it's a weird um, – You pick the other three 12s that don't win, you know, that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, exactly. Right. But, uh, no, I still have a lot of uh, – I'm going to rise. Just just wait. I'm, I'm going to climb. It's All right, we are we are waiting. You will climb into the top 100. I can, I can feel it. Uh, top 80 at least. Maybe next year. Maybe next yeah. year. He doesn't have a transfer portal to help him out, though. So he's just stuck in the in the bottom every year. He Thank God somebody portal. else like does. Maryland does. That's a good yes. segue. Well done, that's, Larry. That's Thank an excellent you. segue. Thank He's you. been playing that all day. We got about um, two minutes before Rodney should be joining us. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I'm full of segues every show. You guys just don't normally like it. Either goes over your head or just like you know, you guys aren't calling it out, bringing attention to it. Yeah, you're you're, you're yeah, working Rod on a different level. <laughs> Rodney Rice will be joining us maybe in in two three minutes. Here we'll see when he gets here. Maryland's latest commit, the transfer out of DeMatha via a pit stop at Virginia Tech. He didn't really play much there. It's a top 100 recruit, 6'4", 185 shooting guard out of where, Paul? Where? DeMatha? Catholic High School, Hyattsville, Maryland, baby. Yeah, I know, I know what your first question is always every time we have a DeMatha guest. Look, so man, I know what that will be. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. I so I'm excited, yeah. man. I'm excited for him. I think I think people are downplaying him a little bit, and I understand that. 
Um, obviously, he's only had about 10 games in college, but you're talking about a kid who's yeah. two years out of high school and he was a very well regarded high school recruit. You know, development's weird, man. You know, sometimes you could imagine locking a kid in the gym by himself for two years and popping out and being way better than you thought he was. And I would not be surprised one bit if this is this, that kind of situation. Yeah, yeah but I, mean, I, I, I've like, I've written this on the site um, for subscribers, but you know, usually when you ask around about a local player, ask, what do you think of this guy? Is he good enough for Maryland? Can he do this or that? You get a mixed bag or mostly good. A few people kind of questioning with him. Like every single person I've talked to is like, no, he, they're like, he can play. He's good. Like they have no question, you know, whether that still doesn't tell us whether he's going to be Jameer Young or, you know, um, whoever else, but it's a pretty much there's there's a strong consensus everybody likes his game speaking of him he did just join us we're going to add him to the chat now how's it going rodney yeah how are y'all good we're very, good, man. very very excited to have you here on the show with us the latest terp the newest terp committed what was it was it monday i think a few days ago uh what was what was it about maryland and why did why did you pick Maryland? Why did you decide to come back home? Um, well, first of all, like you said, it's home. Um, it gives a chance for my friends and family to come watch me play. Um, so that's comfortable. I'm comfortable with that. And um, playing for Coach Willer, he lets his guards go. And um, I want to be a part of that. That's a great opportunity for me and my game to just fully come out and play like myself. Rodney, um, when I spoke with you the, the other day, you mentioned that you grew up watching Melo and Anthony Cow and those guys. How much have you thought about, like, wow, you know, I have a chance to be the next big WCAC guard to go and, you know, become a big thing at Maryland? Yeah, those guys, they've done some great things. Um, they paved the way, really. And um, I, I want to do the same thing, do something special here and leave my mark. Hey, Rodney, I have two questions for you. First of all, um, is DeMatha a great high school or the greatest high school? Oh, it's the greatest high school, yeah. That's right, of course, class of 98, which means I was there before you were born, oh, and that makes me old okay. and sad. Um, <laughs> second question, however, um, so you graduated two years ago. Um, you've had some issues with your health and trying to get healthy and, and improve your game. So can you talk about what that journey's been like, trying to get healthy, get back in the lab, get your, you know, work on your game and kind of find where your next home was going to be. Yeah. So when I was injured, I just tried to, um, stay at task, uh, work, work every day, get my body right. Um, get back healthy. Um, and I feel like I've done a good job with that, keeping my mind straight and, um, just staying in the gym as much as I can. What um, are some of the things you've been working on there? Um, just staying level-headed, don't get too low. Um, a lot of times, guys, they find themselves in a bad spot. Uh, they got a lot of distractions, but um, being around my dad, my dad was my biggest voice at that point in time. Uh, he helped me out with that. So, um, yeah, it was a good experience for me. Rodney, Jeff mentioned Anthony Cowan, Melo Trimble, guys that you looked up to when you were coming up. But – the most recent Maryland guard went to your same high school, Jameer Young. He committed somewhere else, transferred into Maryland for the last two years and has been just had an awesome experience. He's launched himself into a pro career here now. Has his experience, was that at all part of your thinking as well? Like, hey, look at what Jameer did. I want to be like that too. Um, well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm my own person. I'm my own player. Um, I just feel like, I mean, Jameer, Jameer is a great player. Um, I feel like this was a good opportunity for me um, to come in here and fill those shoes. Ronnie, what um, what kind of vibe have you gotten from inside the program about how guys are looking? I know, I know during your recruitment, you were communicating with, with Derek Queen and Deshaun, some of those guys. What kind of vibe are you getting in terms of like the collective attitude about moving forward next year and, you know, building a really good team? Um, I can sense the togetherness. Uh, it's a family. Um, everyone looks out for each other. Uh, 
I mean, I can feel the confidence. I can feel, I can feel everyone's excitement to to rise. So that's important um, going into the next season. And just to follow hey, up real quick on that, what do you like? I guess I you had a good quote in your interview with Deshaun uh, Deshaun London about you know the talent you guys will have with you and Juju and and Derek and all these other guys. You know what? What kind of team do you see that? But what do you see as like the personality or the strength of that team and the personnel you guys are going to have? What kind of team are we going to see like stylistically? You think? Um, we just got a lot of guys that can play high IQ, um, guys that can do different things, and um, yeah, I think we can make a run, a big run. Um, trying to win that Big Ten championship. So, um, yeah. So, Rodney, what can Maryland fans expect from you in terms of your game? Like, are you more of a point guard, shooting guard, that kind of NBA-style lead guard? Um, you know, what what are, what are we going to see when we get you on the court for for Maryland Madness in, a, I guess, oh Christ, six months, seven months now? Mm -hmm. um, a scoring point guard that can score the ball in many different ways, a variety of ways, three levels, um, can play make, make my teammates better, um, and they're getting a, a confident – confident player and a player that wants to win. Rodney, there seems to be somewhat of a, a groundswell amongst the local players with Maryland right now. Derek oh. Queen, obviously DHS, Jimmy Kaiser, Jameer came back. We've got you coming back. Do, is there a, something with the local players that are talking about Maryland? Is that something that's happening or is it just random? I think it's just, I think it's just random. Uh, yeah, I think it's just random. Um, I ain't think about it too much, but I did notice there are a lot of guys on the team from this area, so um, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Rodney, when do you get to join the team, start working out, start you know being a part of the program? Um, I don't know, but um, but I can I can go up there anytime I want, hang out, hang out with the guys, uh, the coaches. So um, I've already started doing that. So um, yeah. And also, what, what did Coach Willard tell you in terms of, you know, he only has a few scholarships to spend. He's spending one on you, obviously. He thinks very highly of you. What did he tell you about why he likes your game and what kind of role he wants you to come in and play? Yeah, um, yeah. he said he loved my game. Uh, he's seen some tape. Um, he thinks I can, I can uh, fit into his, what he wants to do. Um, yeah. Uh, he feels like I can be me, play like me, Rodney Rice, like everybody knows. So, uh, yeah. Rodney, when you go to a school like DeMatha, you're going to have a bunch of teammates who end up going to college all over the place, big programs, little programs, what have you. Do you guys still keep in touch a lot? And, and are you going to start, you know, saying, hey, you know, you ever want to come back home, take a look here because we got something nice happening? Yeah, well, uh, fir first I want to see what, what they want. Um, that's important with day one, and uh, then I'll act on that. But as of now, I haven't hit nobody up yet. Rodney, have you heard about any other transfers who might be following your footsteps here shortly? Any ideas who might be joining you? Um, a good get will be Jacoby Gillespie. That will be a really good addition to the team. Rodney, did you – um, no, pretty early in the recruiting, not in the recruiting process, because I know it's only been a few months and you, you had a, a, a different situation after, you know, leaving Virginia Tech. But did you know all along that Maryland was kind of the dream or did it later on as you factored everything? Um, did it? Um, it was a dream, but at the same time, I had other opportunities and um, I made a decision uh it wasn't, it wasn't like that, but, um, and that's what it came down to. So, um, so yeah, Maryland, it ended up, ended up being Maryland. And how did most of your friends and family react when they got the news? Cause they, some of them probably didn't, didn't know it was coming. Oh, not, uh, they were happy. I mean, everybody, everybody, that's what everybody assumed, but, um, but yeah, everybody was happy once it, the deal got finalized, whatever. Um, so yeah, everybody was excited. All right, Rodney, last but not least, and I don't want to get you in any trouble, but um, I'm old enough to remember your dad was quite a baller himself. So when was the first time you could take him one-on-one? 
I think I'm. Or would he argue that he that you still can't take him one on one? I doubt oh, it. Oh not. Oh not. He won't say that. <laughs> he won't say that. Uh, I beat him when I was fourteen. I want to say. Uh oh. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. So. Okay. Did he let you yeah. win, or did you legit beat him? Nah, he. I beat him. He just couldn't move with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had first legs. First legs. I was getting to the basket and everything. So. Um. So yeah. He's trying to pull that old man game stuff on you, the fadeaway yeah. fadeaway jumpers and stuff. Yeah, he tried. He tried. <laughs> All right, Rodney. Thank you so much for joining us. We ask one thing of everybody who comes on the show: Could you do us a favor and say, "This is Rodney Rice, and you're listening to IMS Radio." This is Rodney Rice, and you're listening to IMS Radio. Thank you so much, Rodney. We're so happy to have you back in Maryland. Good luck with everything. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Go Thanks, Rodney. Go Terps. Yes, sir. There we go, Mr. Rodney Let's Rice. Let's get all the Damatha kids, man. Let's get them all. Like Pokemon, just collect them all. His dad Damatha. was the baller, by the way. He was the uh, All-Met Player of the Year in 83, and then he went to Boston College, transferred to Richmond, and led them to the Sweet, the Sweet 16. I can't remember yes. who they upset. Is that um, the team that beat Syracuse in the 52 yes, game? 80 yeah, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was 88? 80, 80, yeah, not 83. It was it was later. I think it was late, late 80s, but because I, cause I, yeah, I, I yeah. do kind of remember that. That's when I started paying attention to stuff like that around here. Yeah, yeah. he was the All Met player of the year in 83. Then, uh, yeah, it was late 80s, but so he's got good that bloodlines. Was the first, uh, yeah. That was the first 15 to beat a two, Richmond beating Syracuse. That was the first time. That's in a Larry spreadsheet that. somewhere. <laughs> it's, dad it's dad is this, very humble about it's it. In too. this he, just, he doesn't bring it up. If you bring uh, bring up bring it up, he kind of just laughs it off. He's very humble. I'd be like that. My whole identity would be based around that I was led a team to the first upset over a number two. Oh, I, <laughs> no I would, idea. dude. I would have like just all my t-shirts would be references to that basketball game. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, well, shit, Jeff. You still brag about blocking Stevie Francis all the time. That's your claim to fame. Oh, I didn't. I didn't block him. I did steal the ball. <laughs> I did steal oh. the ball from Lonnie Baxter one time. Steve, oh, okay. Steve dunked I, I on thought me. You you're blocked. Really, oh no! no I, I, story. You're talking about my my glory story um, where I blocked uh -oh. Keith Bogans. Uh, uh -huh. oh, I, I mixed I mixed your guys. He says yeah. block. Up. The thing is, when he says block, he means blocking foul, but he's just not. No, he, no, he, it was it was weak. It was weak side bullshit that he couldn't see coming. But I'm I a still master. Got it. Yeah, I'm a master of the weak side <laughs> bullshit block. But yeah, you just got to creep. Uh, no, I stole I, it from Lonnie Baxter. Steve Francis dunked on me in front of about 200 people at this three on three tournament, but the ball didn't go in. It shot up like a million feet in the air. And that's why I'm still alive today. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. have those. I have famous, I have stories about doing concerts with famous people. I don't have, uh, I didn't play any sports. Nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. Yeah. That's Joe that's Forte probably... still got my Tupac CD, man. I want that back. If you're listening, Joe, you're not getting it's it. Bullshit. Back. I'm not getting it. Back. All right. Rodney Rice joining the fold. That's one transfer. Jeff. Yeah, let's talk about into... shopping season, man. This is this is yeah. fun times, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you because I know there's a lot of premium articles about who may be coming, who's close, and and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna let you decide which of those people you're gonna name and and which you're gonna like lead people to the board yeah. for. So what do you what's going on? So it's no secret who the top name right now is even you know rodney mentioned him jacoby gillespie he's the point guard uh from belmont one of the top guards in the in the portal one site evan mykawa i got mykawa i can't remember how to pronounce his name but he's got a really good analytics site and i looked at his transfer portal rankings he's got him at number two overall behind uh i believe doug mcdaniel excuse me so um so he's legit maryland hosted him on a visit last week uh, and I think they're in pretty good shape there. There's some schools trying to get him to visit this weekend, Oklahoma and Florida, but I like Maryland's chances with him. That would obviously be a huge, uh, domino. You put him with Rodney Rice. That's a pretty good, you know, hypothetical, uh, backcourt. And then once, you know, if they can get that done, the move is to get a shooter, you know, a, a wing shooter type that they're missing kind of what, Donald Carey was what Noah Bachelor was hoped to be. Um, so I think that they're, you know, I ha actually have a have a subscriber report up on the site 
today about one guy that they're prioritizing and maybe have a pretty good shot with. And, you know, that that's the focus now. Once you get those two guards, assuming you get Gillespie and you get a shooter, you're all out of scholarships. So then the question is, does anybody else leave? Because it still feels like you need like one more player to me. Yeah, and then the 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 kind of the wild card here is Jahari Long, right? He did his ACL while on Maryland's dime. Um, there were some questions as to whether he might look into transferring for what would be his last his COVID year. Um, but now, you know, who knows with ACLs? Like he he could be back and playing again, you know, mid season. But you know, you would assume he probably redshirts this year, and whether he wants to stay at Maryland to do that or move along, or there's some way you can work that out that Maryland's still taking care of his recovery, but he's not on the roster, Like, which is a shame because you could imagine a situation where if they're looking for this last guy, it could be a th- you know three or a stretch four who can really shoot, and you're going into the season with you know basically four guards with Gillespie, Rice, DHS, and Long as kind of that fourth guy who can be that backup point guard. Like You might be able to roll with that. I'm not sure you can anymore. So even if you lock down Gillespie, you've already got Rice. You still need at least one more guard. Yeah. Before you even start talking about maybe trying to get that that kind of three four swingman shooter. Yeah, and I know they like um, Kanye Clary. Was dismissed at Penn State this year. Uh, you know, as I, I reported, I think last week Maryland's done its due diligence on him and is not really apparently concerned about that. You know, he averaged 17 a game as a sophomore. Maryland fans who – those who were still watching the games closely last year saw him put up 25 against Maryland. So he can really score. So the question is, I, I think if you get Gillespie, the next guy's got to be like that three-slash-four shooter type. But then if you have room, someone else, if another scholarship opens, maybe whether it's Jahari Long or somebody else um, – would you go back to like a Clary and get another guard or does he feel like he's got enough guards? Cause it's still, you know, you look at it, you got DHS returning and Malachi Palmer coming in. Who's, you know, total unknown commodity. You can't expect a lot out of him right away. So uh, that's the question to me. It's still, even if you get Gillespie and another shooter to me, it just feels the roster feels way, way better, but it also still still feels one dude short. Well, you have Chance Stevens. Did you say that when you were just listening? Chance off Stevens, the too. Good call. Yeah, Chance. I've, he was injured last year, obviously. Uh, he's got the best-looking stroke on the team. Everybody's seen the video videos on Twitter where he's making, like, 48 out of 50. That's in an open gym, of course, which is totally different. But, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be – for them, if he could become even, you know, a poor man's Donald Carey next year, I think that would be huge because – this year's shooting was I still haven't looked it up. I meant to look up whether this was the worst three point shooting season in Maryland history. I think it might've been, but close if not. Yeah. And then, and then they've got Kaiser as well. Who's kind of a two, three, four, right. He kind of plays into that mix, but probably next year be more of a three or a four. And I really think he and and DHS are going to have, big jumps next year. I I do. I think they're going to be a lot better. So Kaiser's going to be in that mix as well, correct? Yeah, definitely. I agree, though. But I, I'm with you. I think people give up on players too early. You know, we saw if you were on the message boards or Twitter, you saw everybody hammering Hakeem Hart as a freshman. Not good enough. Daryl Morcel, when he's shot 12% yeah. from three as a freshman, everybody he said he wasn't good enough. Uh, even Julian Reese is a freshman, you know, it's, and I'm forgetting someone else recently, but um, I think those guys will be a lot better next year. But I still think at forward, like Juju or, or Derek Queen, are, one of them is going to be technically playing the four, but you still don't have like that either athletic four man or that face up three point shooting four man necessarily on the roster you know kaiser's a three slash four he's not a great athlete and his shot has been good but was not good this year so you don't have that i think that's the one commodity that they would still need if they fill these other two spots well it's complicated too but you know you've still got geronimo right so if geronimo 
sticks you know obviously he's he's got that athletic four down he does not have the three point stroke that you're looking for yeah but you if he's your if he's your you're big off the bench that's not a terrible situation that's true and you still want to get somebody not out there at who all can, yeah. who can yeah. shoot yeah. from that from that position and i don't know again like there you, it's so hard to try and game out how this is going to work because you could imagine a, a geronimo saying you know what i'm going to take a take a look for you know a starting spot somewhere and then that spot opens and you you try and fill that guy with a guy who does who has geronimo's athleticism but maybe a better stroke right yeah. that's probably a, a net improvement but it might hurt you on the defensive end because geronimo was part of the reason why the de- defense was as elite as it was last year you know i think the there's been a lot of talk about the you know, playing Reese and Queen together. And I I kind of suspect we're not going to see a ton of that. Like you may see 10 or 15 minutes a game overlapping, but I think yeah. most of the time it's going to be one of them at the five and somebody else at the four, whether yeah. yep. it's Geronimo or, you know, or, or Kaiser or somebody else who comes in because I feel like trying to do that twin tower stuff is going to be real matchup dependent depending on who they're playing how they're playing and how both of these guys really mesh when they actually get them in the gym together and foul trouble. And that's why I said um, that I think you'd still need that athletic four man, because if it doesn't work out where they're playing together a lot, then that means you could have Geronimo in the same, you could be expecting him to play too big of a role again next year. You know, if those guys aren't playing a lot, you don't have a bunch of power forwards or threes on the roster. So basically, I think basically you need to find another Dante Scott, right? You need to do something, not necessarily the exact same guy, but you need a similar, I think, kind of player. Uh, but that's down the road. First, they got to finish these guys off. And I think with Gillespie, they have a pretty, a really strong chance. Well, that's the very good news for basketball right now after a, after a horrible season with the excitement of the portal off to a very good start. The football team also had some good news recently received a commitment from Julian Horton, six foot one seventy five safety out of Bel Air. Uh, another high three star. He's Loxley's been getting a lot of these guys. The class is off to a really good start. Yeah. They like this kid a lot. They think he's way underrated one of the best at his position in the area. So they were really happy to get him done early on. It's helping to have uh, Azar Abdul Rahim back. He's been recruiting all over the place. I think he was the primary recruiter on this one as, as well as I think their last commit. So, um, so yeah, they are off to a good start. I mean, I think, like I've said before, they've turned a corner in terms of stability and, you know, attractiveness nationally with what they've done the past few years. And um, I think the NIL situation has improved. So this should be a, a, a I'm guessing a higher, I'm, don't even ask me Larry to rank it. Cause I have no freaking clue where it's going to be. Uh, Top 25. It's possible. It's possible. It certainly, it yeah. certainly seems they certainly feel like they're getting off to a better start than they normally yeah. do um, in terms of ranking wise. And this kid seemed like, you know, he got the high star, three star, but he was unranked on 24-7 at first. Like, he feels like just the exact type of, type of Loxley kid where you just pluck somebody from somewhere. And as soon as those guys get the tape, they're like, oh, shit, this guy's – this kid's good. You know, and then you'll get the avalanche of offers coming in from other schools too. And that's fine. That That's – you just got to trust him when it comes to kids like this who might be unranked at first. But guys got a really good look for talent. So, like, I, I just – get all these guys you want doesn't bother me one bit. And the fact that they end up getting rated high afterwards is great for the class and the PR and stuff. But I trust Loxley's getting good football players when he does this type of thing. And the reality for me is like, you just got to go get Malik Washington. Now you got to do it. Like you Yeah. We always it. focus on, on stars and rankings, but if you look at these, this run they've had of defensive backs going in the NFL, Deontay Banks was a two star, you know, low three. Yeah. He didn't have uh, any other BCS offers, I don't think. Uh, Jacorian Bennett went to Juco because no one was offering him a scholarship out of high school. And Bo Braid had more offers than those guys, but he was a three star. So they have a pretty good track record lately there. Even still, I think might have been a high three star. You know, yep. like these are not stud recruits, they're just really good players. 
And, you know, Locke's always, you know, look at you. Know, you always got the Kobe Prentice situation, right? Where he just finds these guys and all of a sudden everybody's just, it, it's almost like we talk about where sometimes, you know, the, the, the joke is that the, the ranking guys wait to see who Alabama or Penn state decides to sign. And then all of a sudden, you know, bump up their rankings. Cause like, well, if James Franklin or Nick Saban wants this kid, he must be really good. It almost feels like a lot of the coaches let Mike Loxley do their scouting for them, at least around here. And as soon as Maryland goes and offers a kid or goes and, and tries to get a commitment, then they swoop in and try and steal him. So that's not a terrible place to be when you're a program of Maryland's size. Like you've got to be able to take those three-star kids and turn them into something because you're never going to get enough four stars and five stars offset it. Yeah. I, um, yeah well, we, we had Doan and he basically corroborated what you said where, Hey, all these guys are offering this guy. Maybe we missed something. Let's go check them out again. And then that's when they get the bump. So yeah, that does. Right. Happen. And that's fine. That's not a conspiracy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just them. It's a numbers a game. It's a yeah. numbers yeah. game. You can't be on top of yeah. thousands and thousands of kids who one, it's just having this amazing growth spurt in the past three months or whatever, and you haven't seen him. And you know, it's football scouting. Bumped, bumped, up. bumped up that 200 time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we didn't ask him about Sorry, that. Sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Yeah. That we one. left, we didn't, we left that one out. Fortunately. Yeah. That would have been funny, but uh, people had busted his chops for so long about it. Yeah, know. we we didn't we didn't need to go there again. Uh, we, yeah. We've been to that well a few times. Speaking of Malik Washington, is the QB that Maryland's targeting? Everybody hopes Maryland gets. He's like low four. I think he's four star, right? Like right around ninety. Um, and I, Loxley had his sort of kickoff to spring practice and he, he gave he gave a talk to everybody and at one point he was talking about how he has, has six quarterbacks and i don't know if that's exactly true there's probably three that are in contention for the starting spot he said there are six he has to say that right but how cool is it that that's actually a legit thing there were years in the past where it was just talia and pray right um and before that, before Talia, how many years did Maryland go where it's like, there's nothing. So that's pretty awesome to kick off spring practice with all these guys. Everybody's excited to see. And there's going to be a real competition there with actual quality players in depth. That's yeah, awesome. You got to hope one of them is, uh, you got to hope at least one of them is a high quality guy. That's the catch, obviously. I mean, Talia had his flaws, but replacing a guy as prolific as him who was just like yeah. robotic trained to be a quarterback all of his life isn't, you know, that's obviously difficult. It could be one of those situations where people are like, you know, we, we remember all the things you said about him, you know, kind of uh, as people have been with Willard and Turgeon kind of situation, not that I necessarily agree with them, but uh, long story short, yeah, it's going to be wide open competition. I don't, I don't think that, you know, people always assume when you get a transfer that he's the guy, he was promised the job. But uh, speaking of MJ Morris, but uh, that's not the case. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, uh, you can feel confident going into the into the competition, but we still don't know whether anybody these guys can really do it at a level that's high enough. So it's exciting. I do feel like, you know, I was at the bowl game. I saw those two guys you know, kick the crap out of Auburn in the first half. And obviously MJ Morris has a bit of a resume in college himself. So he's proven he could at least get some things done at this level, but we're coming off of basically Maryland's best quarterback ever, at least in terms of stats and certainly the best quarterback in, I don't know, the past 20, 20 years. Right. So it's kind of a, it's a big shoes to fill. And I wouldn't necessarily expect that you're going to get the level of quarterback play that we've been used to the last couple of years, despite all Leah's flaws. Those are, those are evident and that's fine. Um, but it's exciting. Yeah. It'd be cool. All three of those guys look like they can play. So it'll be interesting to see which ones do it. And they all play in a little different way too. Right. So maybe seeing how locks feels like a guy fits his offense better might be the tiebreaker, not necessarily, well, is this guy good enough? And these guys aren't. You know what I mean? Maybe they're all good enough. Maybe just one or two of them fits the offense better and, and kind of has those leadership qualities that he's looking for to take this thing to, to the next level. So I'm excited for spring ball, man. It's going to be 
it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Hopefully get to see all these guys on the field and ball out and, uh, and, you know, we'll see what happens in August. And going back to what you said about not knowing if you have a QB who's good enough, that's why what Loxley said uh, at media day this week is spot on. They have to be able to run the ball better this year. It's very unlikely you're going to have a quarterback as reliable uh, and last year they didn't run the ball well, so I think that's you know an enormous key for them is to improve there. They brought in a second offensive line coach, Damian Robluski, I believe, a uh, very highly respected veteran coach. So they're actually going to have a unique scenario with two offensive line coaches this year. So to kind of you know, hopefully improve the the run blocking because I think they're going to have to lean more on Roman Hemby. Dude, a guy who looks like that with that name is going to be a killer offensive line coach. Like yeah. that's just, that is just absolutely guaranteed. So I, yep. I'm excited about that too. Um, and yeah, I, I think the running game, I think what Loxley might be hinting at is that he's going to expect his quarterbacks to really be able to run. I think they basically gave up on Leah as a successful runner most of the time. I mean, he still would run three or four times a game, but most it was mostly gimmicks and broken plays. I think if, if you're going in this competition, you know, if Billy Edwards can solve his passing, I think he's going to be in a pretty good spot. If MJ Morris is able to kind of be the all around guy who can run a little bit, throw a little bit, that might put him in a good spot. Cam Edge doesn't look like a huge runner, but he certainly looks great in the pocket. So you kind of got three guys with slightly different skill sets, but I imagine Locke's going to have to counter those kind of interactions and the way he's looking at these guys based on whether they're going to be able to help the run game too, because I feel like if you're Maryland, you're not going to be able to line up. Even now we know the talent's better across the board. You're not just going to be able to line up across from the Ohio States and the USC's and the Oregon's and, you know, everybody else and just say, yeah, we're going that way. Try and stop us. You're going to need a quarterback. Who's going to be able to do things. You're going to need a quarterback. Who's going to be able to run, do some deception and that's just going to make him be even better. Yeah, he he actually mentioned in that um, in that kickoff as well. He he made a comment about he he excited to see the quarterbacks. He's about he's excited to see which ones can extend the play. And with Talia, I think that we've talked about this a number of times on the show. He probably could have ran a lot more. He had the skills probably to do it. It was a reluctance to run, right? So yeah, Billy, Billy, Billy's got no reluctance. He's, a I know no, he's, and, he's and Loxley made that comment about who's going to be able to extend the play. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that in the game plan going forward. Now that Talia has gone. Yeah. When you can't wing it downfield all the time, you got to win on the margins, you know, be able to get that fourth and two that, you know, as we saw Edwards come in as a specialist and score all those touchdowns and, and occasionally just break off that long one. So that that's definitely an advantage that he has in the competition. Yeah. Billy, Billy's a hoss, man. He wants, he wants to run. He's, <laughs> he's got, he's, he's got that linebacker aggression as a quarterback. It's, it's really cool to see. It's a bit of a, bit of a throwback. Spring practice started, I believe it was yesterday. We're recording this on Wednesday afternoon. And then it is 30 days until about until the spring game. August, sorry, April 27th, Saturday, April 27th. So that's pretty awesome. I will not be in town or I would maybe try to go to that. Um, the other thing that was kind of cool that's kind of come out for football is the whole Baltimore Day thing that they're doing with Morgan State. I think that's Oh, really I love cool. that. I love that, yeah. doing the joint practice with Morgan State. Like, yeah. you know, in the way that, you know, you'll see pro teams do a joint practice with uh, with other pro teams, like in the area or what have you, like Redskins would always play with, you know, do a practice with Pittsburgh, you know, that kind of thing, or the Ravens or whoever. That's super fun. I love they're doing that. And maybe they can know. do one with Penn State and get into a fight like teams sometimes, like the <laughs> NFL teams do sometimes when they probably would happen. It would happen. I well, don't that might know happen that between I... James and James and locks. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know that they're actually going to be able to scrimmage each other, though. I was reading something where it said it has to be more more of a just a promotional thing. Yeah. Where kids will come out and meet the players, meet the teams, that kind of stuff. I don't know that they're actually going to be able to physically scrimmage. No, it's smart, um, smart marketing, though. It's sort of huge. It's that, great. 
really haven't been done yes. enough over the years to generate statewide uh, interest and loyalty. It'd be yeah, really good that, if, if they could tap into the sort of Ravens culture because Ravens have a very collegiate type fan base. It's very raucous, very rowdy. And if you yeah. could get a kind of Terps on Saturday, Ravens on Sunday kind of thing, that'd be pretty awesome because it doesn't exist to the extent that you'd hope it would in the middle of these two markets, right? Where these yeah. all these pro fans also come to Maryland on Saturday. It'd be really good to have that. No, I absolutely b believe the Ravens showing up stole our latent fan base. Like if if the Ravens still weren't here when Ralph had those years, we'd be talking about a very different thing. I, I will believe that to my grave. And there's no way to there's no way to counterfactual that history, but I, I absolutely believe that's true. Just another just could, another negative about true. the Ravens. Just you know, yep. they are they are they are terrible, who they are, you know. You terrible just, franchise worst yes terrible what a terrible franchise yes okay all right well anything else guys we covered we didn't um, talk about juju the portal season oh, oh yeah yes. yeah that's kind of somewhat right. I mean, I kinda, somewhat oh, important. I, we kind of I just kinda, assumed well, everybody well, knew i don't blame you so everything yeah. is so portal and recruiting focused right now yes, i blame you yeah. for not thinking of that yeah he's, i mean by all accounts julian reese is coming back from multiple sources that I spoke with who have a pretty good feel for where he stands. It did seem a few weeks ago, like he was very likely to enter the portal. I think that they've dodged that scare, but you know, he hasn't announced it formally yet, but that's well, and, and related to that, I think, you know, it's very clear. And if you listen to our interview with Harry Geller uh, yeah. last week, uh, you know, this, and if you didn't, you should go back and listen to it. But Maryland has clearly stepped up their NIL approach on both the basketball and the football sides. And I can't believe that's not somewhat related to uh, seeing, you know, the remaining, let's say the remaining uh, upper end of the Maryland basketball roster looks like they're all going to be coming back. So um, that's good news. And we talked about this before where I think we always think about NIL in terms of shopping season and being able to bring in new kids, but it's so important to being able to keep kids around. And if you're going to have guys like DHS and Kaiser that might take one, two, three years to develop, you want to make them feel comfortable and wanted and feel like they're getting a little bit of theirs too, even if they're not putting up the numbers yet. And for a guy like Reese, I mean, at any point he could have rolled out and, and made some big money from all the schools and he chose not to do that. So I imagine they're taking pretty good care of him too. So that's all all good news, you know, for the present and the future, as far as I'm concerned. Like his sister did, right? Like his sister did. Hard yeah, to so, but, hard to look at her career and think she didn't do the right thing, argue. is it? I mean, she's literally did, yes. she's literally one of the biggest not, not stars gonna, in mainstream know, sports. Not, not, not women's basketball, not even yeah. college basketball. She's like a mainstream legit superstar. So it worked out pretty well. Yeah, but a lot of it's funny it, seeing all the people like be like, oh, I'm okay if he leaves. He did it. Oh, he couldn't, you know, uh, foul Idiot the fouls too. and the free throw shooting and this and that. It's like those are clearly mostly people who only watch Maryland. So they just see his warts and they're not watching other games so they can get a relative feel for actually how good he is. Because if he went in the portal right now, he could be the number one guy based on what I've seen. He'd be top five easily. I mean, Cliff Amori from Rutgers, I think, is number two. In either the twenty four seven, he might be number one. Yeah, oh, he's, he's better than he's, number one big man. Yeah, he's better than Amaru. Yeah, so you know, without question. Yeah, the, the, and yeah, yeah, yeah. News, the, great, great Maryland yeah, fans who want all three of the best players off of the worst team we've had in thirty years to leave. That seems like a great idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. Let's let's get rid of all of them. I don't know what could what could go wrong. Good news that Reese is probably coming back. Good news Dumbies. that Jacoby Gillespie is probably coming back. What happens if neither do, though? Then what? Oh. No, then I spend all day like arguing with people on Twitter. Yeah. Yes. About my yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you have those yeah. Indiana fans coming for you again, Jeff. Yeah, when I put that stuff up, um, that's definitely a concern. But I, I also calculate that into whether I'm going to put that up. So I think they're. Very, I, I would be shocked if Reese doesn't come back. Obviously, with NIL, you never know. Maybe somebody comes out of the blue with a crazy offer. 
uh, and Gillespie, I think unless something changes, I feel like they're looking pretty good there. It's probably yeah. telling that Rodney Rice brought him up in his interview. I yeah. just, and if you're looking for, uh, you know, green shoots, that's what I was and, going uh, for when and whatnot, I asked him that. I mean, that's, that's probably a pretty good sign. Yeah. All right, guys. Good show. As I think we told everybody, I don't know if I mentioned this, we're recording during the day Wednesday because of schedule. This isn't, hasn't been a live show like we normally We gave do. up the whole gig, man. We made it 45 minutes in without anyone knowing. We could have just pretended it was totally live tonight and you blew it there. And I, I, almost, didn't, I almost didn't say anything. We could have pretended yeah, it was but, live, but then people would think we were totally ignoring them in the chat. I know. That's what I was going to say. That we, oh, that I'm fine with that. I ignore them all the time. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> You do. I love the chat. I love the chatters. Yes. Yes, I do. We all hate I Paul. Love the, we all hate Paul. We I love the chat. I love the chat. I just don't like the chatters, if that makes any sense. You know, I like I like the idea of the chat. I just don't like the people who do it. So you just you're just a negative person in general, Paul, and I'm a very positive person. This is the way it is. It's the way yes, the and, way, and Jeff, is like, Jeff is like Jeff is like uh lukewarm water. In the in the middle, I'm I'm, I'm very pragmatic. <laughs> Lukewarm. That's your new hey, tag from now on. If you were, if Luke everything you, Jeff. if Luke everything you said was on the record, you'd be lukewarm too. <laughs> been, yeah, especially, yeah. especially when point. you're, especially when the, sub, when the subject matter over the years, those things tend to fall through a little more frequently than even when they seem done. Uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah, but no, uh, yeah, I'll probably stay lukewarm. Oh, no, I, I'm not lukewarm. I got a crystal ball pick in with a confidence score of eight for Gillespie. That's not lukewarm. That's pretty bold, I'd say. Well, uh, and you know, yeah. you know, we got the we got the Colby ball in too. So you know, and and when's he announce it, Jeff? Colby, Colby's very careful about when he decides. He to don't miss. Anything. He does no. not miss. I literally. I when when is he announcing? Uh, i I think it'll be soon. Like I wouldn't be surprised at any any time really i think it'll it's it's coming probably soon you know what i was worried about when we talked about doing this in the afternoon is that gillespie was going to commit like immediately after we were done and we were just totally screwed i'm still <laughs> kind of sure that's going to happen there's a window we got to get through a window here recording about... between noon and one and then this is not going to air until 7 p.m so you got six hours to to, to get through paul yeah, come on, Gillespie. Let's do it. Let's just blow it up at this point, right? We, we, the, yeah. You know, the, everybody can see who's behind the curtain. Just uh, <laughs> let's just go weird, get weird with it. All right. Good show, guys. You guys will be watching on YouTube starting at 7 p.m. Wednesday night. It'll also come out on the audio later on Wednesday as well. And I don't know. There's so much news right now. Maybe we're still kind of on a weekly schedule with all these, all these with the portal stuff. You know, maybe next week yeah. we'll have. If there's a good announcement in Maryland's favor, maybe next week we'll have that person with us. Who knows? So we'll see. Maybe next week. If not, we'll, we'll let you guys know whenever we're coming back. And uh, thank you guys for listening and watching. Please subscribe. This is IMS.